Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Black Real Estate Dialogue Podcast. I'm very excited for this episode. Here with me, I have Byron Sellers and Sharnice Williams from Mobile Home and Le- Investors out of Chicago. Thank you two for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Thanks for having us. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, so first, uh, I would just love to hear from each of you. What were your childhoods like and what did you see or maybe what didn't you see that shaped your view of building wealth? Yeah, so um, as far as my childhood, you know, born and raised here in Chicago, uh, lived on the southeast side my whole life. Um, You know, growing up, you know, I always tell people like, you know, growing up, entrepreneurship is something new to me because growing up, you know, only thing I saw in my family was just everyone, you know, you know, going to school, getting that degree, getting that nice job. And that was it. That's all. And that's what I was taught. You know, I was taught that, you know, you have to go to school, you have to study, you have to be in your book. So that was primarily my childhood, which is really focusing on school. And then once I graduated college, just getting that job. So, and even my parents, same thing, you know, my parents, you know, my mom's an accountant, my dad, he was in the military at first, and then he ended up just getting a regular job. But, you know, that's all I knew as far as my childhood and my upbringing. Yeah. And for myself, I grew up in a Jehovah's Witness household. So um, that was growing up, you know, to me, it was normal. But um, a lot of that kind of came from the concentration was school work, uh, ministry work. And, you know, I was kind of taught that my mother used to always tell me I was materialistic because I always tell her I want that Lamborghini. I want that Ferrari. I want, and, you know, and so I always kind of knew I wanted, I was like, I tell my mom, I want to be rich. So, you know, I think not to say it was a battle, but growing up, just finding out who I was, it wasn't a lot of, you know, entrepreneur, it wasn't any business savvy people that was really in our network. And I think my, my first experience was, you know, when I went to college, that's when it kind of opened up my mind to say, you know what? I think, yeah, I'm watching shows. I remember watching The Apprentice and shows. I'm like, this stuff is, this is where I want to be. And I grew up, uh, I was a caddy as well. So I I caddied at golf courses and I would see these wealthy men pull up in all these cars and then, you know, on a golf course, they're just talking about million dollar transactions. And I'm like, I want to be a part of that. And that's where my curiosity got sparked. And, you know, that, that was kind of my quest as well. For sure, for sure. So I think it's cool. It's cool. I think it's very interesting how just growing up, how it can shape you as an adult. And sometimes you just want to do something different. Um, and so why mobile homes? You know, it's not something that people talk about. Well, people are starting to talk about it more, um, but especially in our community, I don't know anybody else in our community who is succeeding like you two are in mobile homes. So why, why mobile homes? How did it, how did you figure out that that's what you wanted to do? And so um, at the time I, I, Let's see, March 3rd, 2017, that was the day I was fired from my job, and I kind of went on my entrepreneur journey. And I tried a lot of stuff, right? I tried <laughs> fixing credit. I tried some MLMs. Yeah, the serial entrepreneur. Yeah, right? I think so. <laughs> just a bunch of stuff. I was just trying. And, you know, my main, my main thing is I wanted to coach people at the end of the day uh, uh, when it comes to just life coaching. And uh, I, I was driving a Lyft at the time and still wanted to do real estate, and I came across a podcast and it was about, it was on mobile homes. And uh, I sent it to Sharnice because the passengers had told me they didn't want to listen to it. <laughs> so I sent it over to Sharnice. And when I got home, she was just like, Byron, we doing mobile homes. <laughs> yeah. I told him, you know, I told him, like, look, we doing mobile homes. Because at the time, he still, because he was trying to get a building as well. He never really talked about that. But he was trying to get a building here in Chicago. And that kind of fell through. So he actually, at the time, he wanted both of us to get buildings and then we would house hack. And so we would live in one unit, rent out all the other units. But, you know, like he said, I heard that podcast and that's why I salute podcasts so much because just from hearing that, that episode, you know, it sparked me enough to be like, listen, I know you're trying to go the traditional route, but let's try something different. Let's go ahead. Let's do mobile homes. You know, the capital is lower. Our credit doesn't have to be so up to par, which it wasn't at the time. And, Man, it's just, it's been a, a, a selling since then. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's amazing. Um, so what did that first mobile home trans- transaction look like for you? Man. Yeah. So, man, we saw over 40 houses before we even that, we got that first one. <laughs> 
And uh, we saw some stuff that, you know, it, what I love is like when you, you know, when you kind of do traditional real estate, you see mobile homes, even if you see a bad one, you're like, oh, I can fix this. Like this, this is no problem. <laughs> um, but, you know, the ones we, it was the perfect deal, honestly. Uh, Sharnice had contacted a gentleman that was a park manager and he said he had two houses um, he wanted to show us. And when we got in there, one house, it was, he was, it was 6,500. Yeah, one house was sixty five hundred. The other one, I think, was fifteen hundred. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so we was like, we want them. We saw him. We was like, oh, this is we we need these. And he was like, throw me a number. And I know Sharnice had told me to tell him four thousand, but I was just like, I don't want to insult him. How about forty three hundred? And he said yes. And we was like, for two houses, he's like yes. We was like, oh yeah. This is this it right here. <laughs> yeah, but I told him he would have went for that four too though. He would yeah. still went for that four. <laughs> but no, yeah. We ended up we getting them two homes for 4300 and then we ended up selling both. So the first home we sold for 9500 So that was 3700 Let me go back. It was moving and ready. So the cool thing about that deal is that we didn't have to do anything. It was clean. The park had just cleaned it. We didn't have to do anything but just market it and sell it. So we ended up selling that one for 9500 and then the yeah. second one. And the second one was the, the fifteen. I mean, sorry, the five hundred dollar home because it came up to five hundred dollars. We put three thousand into it. It was all in thirty five hundred. We sold that one for ten thousand. Uh, that was our first two deals. So we knew it was like, okay, let's try to do this every month. And yeah, because that at the time I was working here in the city of Chicago at the mm -hmm. gas company, and my salary was right a little bit under forty. So you're talking about I had made nineteen five in a month's time, and that was like half of my salary at the time. So that's what really opened up my mindset to be like, "Wow, this is something that I really need to continue to do." You know, even though I have this, you know, this mentality of a nine to five, but wow, this entrepreneurship, this is a whole new wave. So for sure, for sure. Wow. So you were able to taste some success pretty early on. Um, and I think I think that's really cool. What like going into that, just knowing that you hadn't done it before, what did that feel like? You know, just trying to buy them and then market them and selling them. What did it feel like during the process? Like before you reached the ultimate you ultimately, you know, flip those two uh, properties? Yeah, so for myself, man, it was like a sweet fear because I had already, like, I, I went through the fire. Like, right before that, I had nothing else to lose. Car repo, I was broke. Credit was, at the time, probably like a 500. Um, I, it was so, I didn't have anything else to me that I'm like, I can lose other than my life. And I knew I wasn't going to die from this. So it was like a, it was definitely like that sweet fear because it was still unknown. But I was just so eager to just be like, kind of prove like, yo, this is what all this hard work, all this time, I know we're going to make this happen. Yeah. And for myself, I would say it was more, I was like a shocking feeling. <laughs> like I was shocked. Every, like going through the <laughs> process and even when we flipped it and just seeing the amounts that we was getting, like it was a shocking factor because I didn't know anybody else that was doing anything like this or any type of entrepreneurship except for when I met Byron. He was the only person in my life that was doing something like this. So, and even some of the stuff that he was doing prior to us coming together and doing mobile homes, like of course I've always been supportive of it in my mind. In the back of my mind, I always had that this ain't I don't this is unbelievable. <laughs> you know, like this can't you can't be making money like that. Like is this legit? Is this illegal? Like, you know, thinking like that. So yeah, for myself, it was really just the shock factor. Like, wow, like, yeah, this is real. <laughs> like, for sure, for sure. So, you had the first taste of success, and, you know, how did that grow from there? I know you mentioned, you were like, you know what, let's see if we could do this once a month. So, talk to us about how things just continue to, to grow from there. Yeah, so the, the scaling part, you know, the next month, we immediately, our next deal, we have found another home, uh, three grand um and down in indiana uh and we end up putting that on for 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 terms so we we're getting like 428 a month for that one um then we turned we still had profit that we turned around uh, we went back to our original park um and then we end up getting we basically almost got a buy one get one free home um that we, we were going to get a home park manager was given to us for basically um two thousand dollars and uh and really it was because it was helping a lady out so then she's like, hey, I got another house. I like what you guys did, have this free home. So we got another free wow. home. And from there, that's when we opened up our eyes. So we set our goal. It was like, we want to do four, four homes a, a month now. Let's go ahead and scale this. 
And then we start meeting people in the industry that start giving us more tips on how to, to really scale and, and make it systematic. And, um, you know, I, I would say we, we hit that four and, you know, I think w we slow down a little bit. Once we start, we was like, we got to teach this. Like, we was like, we got it. We, I love what we're doing, but people got to hear about this. And, you know, I feel like we're going to be blessed just by teaching this, but you know, that the, the four homes a month slowed down to, you know, the two to, you know, but it was still good because people were still getting great deals. But, um, you know, once we, once we start to, 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 you know, focus on teaching people, it was just like the, the amount of deals, the amount of opportunities just, man, just opened up so fast. Wow. And I love that. I love that. You know, there are some people, they, they get put onto something and, they kind of just keep it to themselves. And I've seen just in following you all, like I, I follow you two very closely and you just give so much, you know, from the lives to the webinars to a, a honestly a reasonably priced course. Someone could make that money back probably on, definitely on their first deal. Yeah. Um, so for me, I just, I've noticed just the giving. Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence that because of that deals come your way and you're able to still succeed and prosper. So I think that's a really great thing that you noticed just so early on, this is something that, you know, we want to, to teach people. Um, and usually, usually towards the end, I ask more about the course and, and support, but we can, we might as well just dive into it a bit now um, since you, since you brought it up. I think, I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. No, definitely, man. I mean, like, um, you know, for us, we, we, I want to say in month three, we was like, imagine where we were at, right? Because we were almost, myself was almost at that rock bottom. Sharnice was transitioning into, you know, Same debating. Situation. Yeah, <laughs> like, she was debating, like, do I want to be an entrepreneur or do I want to go back to the workplace? No, I told him straight up, I was going back to work. But he told <laughs> me, like, no, you're not. You're not doing this. Like, don't give up. Yeah, I was ready to give up. Like, yeah. uh, I say that because I know it's a lot of other people in my shoes right now that's probably like, man, like, this, this ain't working just yet, you know? And I'm just saying that to say to be patient because if I wasn't patient, who knows if I would have went back to work and you know we even would have made MHEI or you mm -hmm. know just did anything like this so yeah and we knew like I said month three we was like we gotta it's people just like us mm -hmm. in this predicament that would love to be because we understood like the, what was holding us back from traditional real estate was credit was you know having Capital. access to the funds like we could have wholesale but we knew our market at that time was I'm not gonna say saturated but it was highly competitive and um we was like you know what like we want to be able to help people because here's my major thing like i see people gentrifying our neighborhoods that look like that don't look like us so i saw opportunity to say hey i think a lot of times people forget about these neighborhoods mm -hmm. and here's an opportunity for my people to be able to actually come in and have some stake in america for sure for sure um and then were those do you two currently primarily invest in like Chicago and in, I think you mentioned Indiana or are there other states that you invest in as well that, or that you've invested in as well over time? So right now we're working on a, a large deal in Pittsburgh. Um, mm -hmm. for, for, for the most part, it's been in Illinois, uh, Indiana. Um, and so, you know, we've had a lot of students ask us like, Hey, can we do deals with you guys? So we may actually start considering. Yeah, we may open that up, but yeah, yeah we got, we got a big deal coming in the next <laughs> few weeks out in Pittsburgh. So once we get past that, we may open up the floodgates, but yeah, that's, that's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. For sure. For sure. Um, so I have just some questions. This is, like I said, this is a very unique interview, um, than what we, than what we typically have. So I have questions from questions that I have and then questions from uh, some followers. Uh, so first, could you just give a breakdown of the main differences between like a mobile home and just like a regular, let's say like brick home or just a, just a traditional home? I'm sure you get that question a lot. Um, from your perspective, what would you say are some of the main differences or maybe even misconceptions too? Yeah. So the, the major difference is one is built in a factory and then where there's the manufacturer home and the, you know, the singular family home is built from the ground up builders. Um, and when it comes to materials, the materials of the home are, um, I guess you can say more cost efficient, um, but it's the same functions. And then normally mobile homes, all of your, um, um, your, your plumbing is above ground. You know, it's covered what they have what's called skirting that covers that. Um, and I was going to say, as far as the capital, what I love about mobile homes, that it doesn't matter what market you're in in the country, 
they're always going to be cheaper than traditional real estate. Mm -hmm. So whether you're you're in the Midwest with us or you're out in Cali, you know, it's still going to be very, very much lower for you to go ahead and afford, you know, if you do have that cash on hand just to buy property. For sure. For sure. Um, and what are some, so I know growing up, um, especially people from big cities, they're, the media paints a bad picture of mobile homes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All type of negative connotations. And for most people growing up in the city, that kind of language is normal. Mm -hmm. Obviously it shouldn't be, but um, what are some misconceptions that you run into or people, maybe students or just regular people in conversation or DMs that just false things that they say or that you hear about mobile homes that just are not true? Yeah, so that's a good point. You know, growing up here in Chicago, like, yeah, my first time going in a mobile home park was when we started doing business in a mobile home park. <laughs> you know, being from a big city, we were, I would ride past them. My family is also from down south. So, you know, I've seen them all the time. But yeah, because of that stigma, it was kind of like, oh, no, don't go in there, you know. And I know Byron always says that he thought it was, he thought of mobile homes when we first started, it's like that A now, mm -hmm. like the movie <laughs> <A> now, <Right. laughs> you know, that stigma and just walking in and just, you know, feeling like we're not going to be accepted. You know, I think one of the biggest, the biggest misconceptions that we get from students or just people who jump on our webinars is the main question they ask about is racism. You know, and that's something that, you know, I definitely want to address and just say like, you know, yeah, you may experience some that. We have had some students that say that they have experienced something like that. But, you know, then I can say for myself, I've experienced that sometimes in the workplace. But what do you do? You just, you know, you brush it off, you walk away. And that's the same thing with a mobile home park. You know, Byron always says, you know, if you're not comfortable, just leave. But nine times out of 10, that's just that individual park. That's not all of them. You know, we've been blessed to be in a situation where, we've never experienced that you know everybody that we've done business with all the park managers the park owners they've been really appreciative to have us work in their communities and to be selling these homes yeah and mobile homes really have a great community feel mm -hmm. um you know when you're talking about mobile home community i think that they know they know their neighbors every every house we ever bought we always talk to the neighbors and they're some of the nicest people you know and i think yeah. the stereotypes come along just like you know in the inner city if you if you're from the hood you know the let's say the 16 17 you know year old or the, the terrorizers in the neighborhood it's only a few of them right but it makes up the majority of the neighborhood and you forget about the elderly couple here the young couple here the young professionals and it kind of brings that bad light because of their uh activity and i think it goes same thing with the mobile home parks but a lot of mobile home parks are strict like most owners are like yo no you can't do this, and if you do this, you're out of here. So it's very, it's a lot of rules you have to live by within the community to stay in the community. So they're actually a lot of, you know, safe places. For sure, for sure. And something else I was thinking about, how does a rehab work on a mobile home? Would a, is it something that a regular contractor would take on? Is it something that you would just kind of get your own handyman and take care of stuff? Um, is there a lot of wear and tear on mobile homes? Like, what, what does that look like from your experience? Yeah, so as far as rehabs, man, um, the good thing about it is, you know, if you want to have a contractor, you can have it. But if, if a contractor has been doing all single family homes, you're going to get high quotes, right? Yeah. But, you know, I always want to encourage people, if you want to ask the park manager if it's in a community, hey, do you know anybody who does work? Can I use some of your guys to do work? You want to go with people who do the work because for them, it's, it's nothing to them. And, and the rates are going to be cheaper, whether it's, you know, you're paying them an hourly, right? The materials are always going to be cheaper. And so, you know, very fast, like, I mean, even the, the mobile home rehabs we have, our turnarounds are less than, you know, two weeks. Um, unless we run into like a major problem and things like that, the only, the only professionals you really need in a mobile home is um, if, you're doing, if you have somebody doing roof work, plumbing, um, and possibly electrician. But other than that, you can have a, anyone who does great cosmetic work can come in there and, and fix it right up for you. For sure, for sure. Um, and then speaking of park managers, like I was just doing some browsing and just like, you know, I wonder what this whole thing is like. And I'm looking, I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't even know where to start. So as far as dealing with park managers, do you typically like approach them to say, hey, are there any homes for, for sale? Like what, what are some tips um, that, that, you, that you would recommend to somebody who's, in, who's interested 
in looking for mobile homes to invest in? Yeah, so that's definitely a great tip. I would definitely suggest, you know, just going to the park manager. Like before you even have the whole investor conversation, you want to mm -hmm. see if they have homes available for sale mm -hmm. in the park right now that's actually in your price range. Now, if they do, then I will actually go and see the home next because that's the thing. Some people get caught up in the whole investor conversation but then you don't even know if the park actually has homes in your price range. So you definitely want to find that out. See the homes, make sure it's something that you actually want to purchase, and then go ahead and have that investor conversation. For sure. For sure. Um, and do you, do you two mostly still do flipping? Do you, um, do you hold any of the properties long-term? So... I would say this for the most of our properties we held long term. The good thing is when tax season came, a lot of people were just paying off their homes, which was yeah. good. Um, so primarily now um, we prefer to flip, just because I think that the capital for us is just looking at the larger picture of mobile home communities. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, for us, we, we kind of do the, the, the flipping strategy, but um, you know, it's, it's still open. If a good deal comes and we know we can get some good cash flow, right? Or if we know yeah. we can get multiple homes out of the package from a mobile home community then we know we, we definitely consider the uh, the rent to own and, and getting payments for those things. For sure, for sure. Um, so you so you sell or you sell or finance some of them back to the people who live there? Yes. Got it. Yes, Got it. we always do self finance. Just, that way we get in the responsibility of, and have a home ownership as well. Definitely. Then you just play the bank. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> I love being the bank. Bank over landlord. <laughs> definitely. That's really cool. Um, do you find that a lot of people are, are open to it because they could own it in a relatively short period of time or is it sometimes kind of you have to negotiate a little more than, than you would want to on those deals no people love it because you know it's similar to a car you know like mm. we normally do it on 60 months three three to five years so normally 60 months though so i mean like byron said people look at it after that first year or two they're getting taxes or they're, you know, whoever else is living with them, they've got taxes. Now they're paying like a lump sum to just go ahead and pay it off because they want that title. They want to, you know, show ownership. They want to own that asset. So honestly, people love it. You know, of course we do get people that want to rent, but we always try to target the ones who are actually looking for home ownership. Definitely, definitely. It's really, really cool. Um, I have a couple more questions from followers, but I want to ask, what is what does the future look like? I know you mentioned you have a big deal coming up in in Pittsburgh, uh, but what are you two have come so far in just th about three years, right? So, what's <laughs> what's the future look like? Like, what are what do you hope for? Oh man, so continue not only buying mobile home parks, um, but my biggest thing is the reason why for mobile home parks is because when we look at the sectors of forty five thousand mobile home communities, uh, four thousand are really institutionally owned, pretty much owned by corporations, so. And when I look at that, and none are really black. And so I really want to be able to, as a collective, not just us, but as a collective, um, you know, with, the, with, with our people, is be able to have a huge, you know, market share. That even if we had 3%, 5% of market share, that still, is bring, that still brings a lot of wealth back into our community. And then really just educating. I mean, mobile, it's not just mobile home investing inside of parks. You, can, you have the transportation piece. You, have, you can create you know, contractors and handymen. You have, um, you can do mobile homes on land and really start to open that up for more possibility because sometimes I feel like we do, not to say we get redlined out of traditional real estate, but sometimes we don't have the access to as much funds so we can't do the larger deals. But if we create it ourselves, you know, and, and, and America's for sale right now. So, you know, really just pushing that agenda to, to get, you know, to continue to get the community to get involved to for another option and just this is another way for us to create wealth together. For sure, for sure. And I love that because, you know, especially how things are going these days, a lot of times it's it's very easy to feel that someone else should give us something for nothing, for no work. And there's just there's there's abundant opportunity all over, you know. You two notice one within mobile home parks. And you're just scratching the surface. So, you know, I feel like there's just a ton of opportunity and we just have to keep keep growing and, and grinding. And, you know, you two are definitely on your way and, and showing and, and showing us how to do it. Yeah, yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's what it's all about, man. Just, you know, each one, teach one. And we, we yeah. all continue to build together. 
For sure. Uh, so I have three questions from followers. Uh, so the first one is from Layla, the investor. She said, when starting out, do you buy land with homes on them or do you buy individual homes and rent the land? So honestly, you can do both. Um, you know, if, if, if you want to go ahead and, and start that again to talk about the mobile homes on land, it's still an affordable option versus building up on that land. So, you know, that is always an option. And even if, as far as buying homes is already pre-existing on land, yes, like pretty much that's just your own park. So now you're collecting, you know, your own land fee per unit, um, you know, which is always a great option. For sure. Um, and then Manny's Mom Fitness said, <laughs> this is actually kind of, uh, she probably wouldn't appreciate me laughing at this, but she said, why can't I find cheap mobile homes here in, Calif in Cali? They want 15 to 20K and another 10K for rehab. How can we get the deals for five to 7K like you with 5K rehab? <laughs> okay, one I want to say, 15K in Cali, that's yeah. a deal. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I, so, uh, I, I, I forgot her name that fast, but love, I want to let you know, in California, 15K for a mobile home, that's a deal. And I think uh, 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 what we need to understand, too, is that it's all going to depend on markets. You know, people see us, they see us in our markets, they see down south, they see us, you know, buying those cheaper mobile homes, but then, yeah, if you go over on the East Coast or even on the West Coast, y'all know y'all houses are more expensive than even <laughs> our traditional real estate. So it's going to be the same thing as mobile homes. That's just the honest question. Yeah. I mean, the honest answer. <laughs> and then I would encourage you, too, to possibly, if you want to find homes that you want possibly, you know, find somebody you trust, partner up JV with somebody in the Midwest or in the South. Um, that way you can put the capital up and they can bring you back a good return. But yeah, to find, I'm not going to lie. Unless you go down to Tijuana, you ain't going to find a $5,000 home yeah. in California. But 15K is good. Oh, if yeah, she amazing. said it's 15, she put 10 into it for a rehab. She's looking at 25K, but how much can she sell it for? Yeah, if she in SoCal, you're talking about 70, 80K. Exactly. That same house in our market, we can only probably sell it for maybe 18, 18 20,000. So that's the thing. Wow. People see us getting those cheaper homes, but our markets, our, our margins isn't as higher. You know, mm -hmm. she has higher margins. So, hey, go for it. <laughs> got you. Got you. Kind of leads into the next question. So CIG Investments said, what are the steps to invest in mobile homes long distance? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's really, you know, um, Doing things like we have a Facebook group. Um, mm -hmm. you want to, there's several Facebook groups out there. You want to, you just want to get in, get in the community. You want to get in the community. You want to see who's doing what. You know, you basically want to check their track record. You know, can they show you some deals? Just like you know, just like virtual um, real estate now. And mobile home investing is it's not new, but it's kind of new to our community. So we still are building trust around that. Um, but you know, that's the biggest thing. You just basically want to be able to you know work with a trustworthy person. Um, that's going to, you know, can show you proof and, you know, stay in communication and build a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because virtual, you know, virtual real estate is very popular because it's a lot of online portals and things of that nature. But with mobile homes, like he said, it's fairly new. It's not really anything like that set in stone yet. So you definitely want to have that boots on the ground person if you are going to do, you know, any type of long distance investing. You just want to have somebody down there that can kind of be that boots on the ground to go ahead and set everything up. And then maybe you just get the fee on the back end just for like introducing the deal or something. For sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, would you say that renting out, like buying, buying a mobile home as a rental in like, let's say someone didn't want to flip, they didn't want to sell their finance. Could it also be potentially lucrative if they did a long-term buy and hold and just rented it out to somebody? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's just, you know, long, I would say if you're going to do that, either A, make sure you if, if you're going to be doing the work, if anything, make sure you're either close to the community or, you know, you're going to hire somebody who is close to the community that can be a property manager that, you know, whatever that you're paying. But that's the biggest thing. You just don't, you want to be able to, if anything goes wrong, you know, you want to be able to maintenance um, your stuff and not be hundreds of miles away. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so I know you two have like the, the Facebook community, you have your course, you have so much um to help people so can you just talk through just different resources that you all have for people and how they can learn more about what you're doing and and become mobile home investors as well 
Oh, yeah, for sure. So, you know, like Byron mentioned, we do have our Facebook community. We love it because it's truly that. It's truly a community. You know, we have investors across the country, you know, doing mobile home deals. We're in there, of course. We have our live classes that we do. We actually have other mini classes in there, even outside of our course. So it's tons of value, tons of information. So we have that. Then we also have our elite e-course and, you know, I, I call that, that's like the Bible. That's everything that you need to know about mobile home investing from start to finish. You know, I think somebody asked as far as like, what are those steps looking like? And that's everything. Every step that you need to follow is in that course. And it's a virtual, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a visual course. It's online through Teachable and yeah, it gives you everything you need. For sure, for sure. Uh, awesome. Well, where, uh, I really appreciate this interview. I mean, it's been great. It's been eye-opening for me, um, just learning about real estate from a different perspective. And I'm just really appreciative of, of you two doing this for our community because a lot of times, well, almost all the time in life, you don't think something's really possible until you see someone do it, especially in our community. You know, like I said, besides you two, I don't know any other black people who are invested in mobile homes and have been very successful and also helping people out. So, yeah, it, I mean, I, I now know it's possible, you know, and, and just following you all for, for, for a while now. Um, so I just want to say thank you. I really do, really do appreciate you too. Oh man. Thank, thank you, you so much for having us. We appreciate it. We love this. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, and so where can people find you if they like to stay in touch with you um, and just keep up with what you, what you all are doing? Yeah, for sure. So we're, we're heavy on Instagram. Follow us at Mobile Home Elite Investors. Um, same thing for Facebook at Mobile Home Elite Investors. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, MH Elite Investors. Um, that's it. That's about yeah, it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> we're we, we going to be starting a Twitter pretty soon. So, yeah. yeah so, nice. look at that one. I think we own there already. We own there. We're just he made one. Right we just not active. Yeah, it's like, at yeah. Mobile Home Elite. Elite. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Cool. I, I definitely appreciate you too. And uh, thank you all for listening. Look forward to hearing from you all soon.